Question, no hate, why to quit Marvel Legends but not McFarlane toys? Hasbro gives us some crappy figures sometimes but most of the time with McFarlane it's bad articulation and the only thing you get is a trading card and stand most of the time. People, it's my opinion, don't rip on me. Well guess what? I'm gonna take your comment into some heavy consideration because it really did make me ponder exactly why it is that I haven't exactly put McFarlane toys under a bit of a scrutiny microscope so to speak and I feel like it's about time that a comment like this kind of got to me and made me realize maybe I should do so because there's been some choices some things that have been going on with McFarlane toys in 2024 that made me think about this comment made it stick with me and prompted me to make this sort of style of video there's also some things that I felt the need to say that at one point I was going to cover one specific aspect as its own video but then I decided to take everything package it as best as possible in this complete f critique in a matter of speaking so let's get started first I wanted to start with the one that I felt is a bit more on the subjective side rather than the objective one because I feel like this one is probably going to be the one that is almost categorizes like the most divisive because you're gonna have some people that are for this approach for this movement and others that are gonna be against it I try to as fence sitting as it may sound kind of fall in the middle where I can kind of look at both uh, camps I can kind of look at both perceptions which is going to be the actual lack of Batman figures we've gotten in 2024 now on paper that sounds ludicrous because you look at some of the things that they've been announcing and you think David there's Batman all over the place this is Batman we're talking about he's always going to be popular there's always going to be some form of demand for this character not necessarily just from McFarlane but practically anything that DC can dig their talents their Court of Owls talents into but Hear me out when I make this argument that when you really break it down to brass tacks, yes, we've gotten a couple of brand new figures in this almost first half of 2024. We're almost six months halfway through 2024. And when you really think about it, there's only been, I, I think, like two or three brand new from the ground up Batman figures. And even then, you can make the argument that they're not all that brand new because they're technically picking and choosing and frankensteining parts from other McFarlane toys Batman figures as I kind of called out on my first appearance Batman review those legs are from the hush buck and the rest of the figure is kind of retrofitted and molded and sculpted out in a different kind of way the gloves are obviously brand new the torso looks like it was kind of retrofitted for the three jokers Batman except they kind of etched out the, and flattened down the chest to make it a little bit more streamlined and look a little more accurate to his accuracy to his actual physique in that comic but then you look at some of the other Batman figures and like I said, there's barely anything that's necessarily brand new. Most of the Batman figures that we're getting are repaints. The black and gray Nightfall. We're about to get a second Nightfall with that Bane and Nightfall Batman 2-pack. Albeit with cloth capes and those are the little things here and there that does look like it's McFarlane kind of sweetening the deal and giving us a little bit of incentive to buy. But not every incentive actually works on the customer. Case in point, if you go over to their site, they unveiled this brand new White Knight Batmobile from the White Knight storyline that, from an aesthetic kind of look, it doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of neat. Up until you look at that price point, almost 90 bucks for a vehicle, and I can't shake the feeling that the, the reason why it's that price is because it's a gold label exclusive to the McFarlane Toy Store. And it seems like McFarlane themselves even realizes this, by sweetening the deal with a bundle that's only $10 more and you get the White Knight Batman and Azrael 2-pack which is kind of a peg warmer. I've seen that thing in targets for literally almost a full-blown year and at one point it even went down to a clearance sale but McFarlane doesn't seem like they has got any kind of shortage in their warehouses and they're trying to shove it out as much as possible by bundling it here for just a $10 extra bonus price hike. Outside of that, you got some of the stuff from the 66 Batman 6-inch line, but again, some of these are just Batman with a funky little gadget. You have Robin with uh, what seems to be like a wax Robin, but it really looks like he's kind of covered in cocaine. <laughs> and then when you look at some of the actual brand new figures, they're not necessarily Batman. You got Superman, you got the Collector's Edition with Captain Boomerang, Penguin, 
and Starfire, which even I have to admit, Starfire looks kind of cool, and if I ever see her in the store, maybe I'll pick her up. But then you have other stuff that are up for pre-order, like the Booster Gold uh, new edition, the you know, very reflective one, the Mr. Freeze repaint with the much more accurate color scheming. You got Ambush Bug. I gotta be honest, I never really heard of that character up until McFarlane decided to make a figure out of him. And that's always been a kind of a cool thing to, for McFarlane to take obscure characters, make a figure, and be like, well, I never heard of this person or, or this character. And if it looks cool enough, maybe I'll look them up. But for the time being, yeah, you look at like some of these earlier pages for McFarlane Toys store actual being able to like purchase stuff or pre-order stuff the majority of them are sold out and for good reason again that Starfire does in fact look kind of cool but when you look at some of the Batman like the Justice League of America build a figure for Elastic Man or I'm sorry Plastic Man <laughs> same difference it's technically just the three Jokers Batman painted all black Right above him is the Prestige Edition of the Arkham Knight Batman suit which I've covered on the channel and even though I really like it's a figure we got back in 2021, either 2020 or 2021, it just with gold parts. That's it. It's the same Batman. Anything that's brand new is a non-Batman figure. And like I said before, this is kind of a good thing because there was a bit of a spell back in 2021, 2022 where we were getting nothing but Batman and other characters weren't necessarily getting the spotlight. So now we've got the inverse of that and it's cool to see these other characters get the spotlight again regarding Starfire she looks awesome but you also got to balance thing out it's all about balance and now it looks like Batman is kind of taking a bit of a hit when you realize that there's just so many properties outside of the live action popular stuff like the upcoming Batman Forever line that you can really take away from like and going back to doing 2.0 as a figures I still think that they could do better on an animated series Batman on a Batman Beyond Batman that can look at some of the things that a lot of people online were criticizing and actually retrofit them with things that we would genuinely love. Those wings, instead of being plastic, maybe they're like a fabric cloth that can extend as you move the arms up and down. Granted, that a limited uh, articulation, but it's just, it's a chance. It's a, it's a thing that they can explore. And for the time being, it doesn't look like they're jumping the gun too much on that, at least for Batman, maybe for other characters. But I would like to see that be explored a little bit more. And that's why I wanted to start that uh, this video off with this specific topic because it is the more relaxed one. It's probably the least of our problems before we get into the trenches. Whenever McFarlane does announce something that's Batman related, it also ends up not even being a 7 inch scale figure. It ends up being a statue. What's with all the statues that they've been doing lately? Now that's not to say that the statues inherently look bad. But it looks like McFarlane is kind of cranking up their statue game. Which is not necessarily something that's brand new to McFarlane. In fact, some of their earlier figures from the 90s with the classic Todd's toys or McFarlane toys. I would say that most of the stuff that was articulated was strictly Spawn. And then when it came to some of the movie maniacs, some of the horror maniacs. Actually, I think some of the horror stuff was articulated as well. But I know for a fact that the sports stuff were pra practically like little mini statues. And it looks like he's harkening back to that. Not just with the recent announcement of the movie maniacs and also a couple of other things where it's just little statues of characters from popular Warner Brothers movies because that's who they have the partnership with. But then now you have some DC Multiverse stuff or DC Direct stuff that's getting the statue treatment. And that's not necessarily anything new as well. It looks like we can harken back to last year when the Flash movie was coming out. And they decided to announce a Michael Keaton 12 inch statue that was going for a whopping 250. And I cannot in good conscience justify ever picking that thing up. It didn't look too bad. But there's probably a very strong reason as to why I never really saw it in the store. Because for 250 that thing better be goddamn spider wrapped or behind some kind of a glass case or something. And the reason for why that is, is because as McFarlane has recently been announcing with their statues, it looks like they're trying to eye two different demographics. The people who want a very cheap statue to just kind of put up on the shelf as like a decorative thing. And then to actually speak to the hardcore statue collectors, the ones that like to go to places like Sideshow and get the really immaculate stuff. And that's where they pretty much separated themselves between PVC statues that retail for about 50 bucks and the resin statues that are going for that higher price point of somewhere between 150 to 250 bucks. 
and I'm seeing them just in much more frequency announcing these statues, whether it be a one a one six scale twelve inch statue on the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy Batman or the Adam West nineteen sixty six classic TV series Batman, and again they look pretty cool they look pretty well detailed it looks like with the scaling they're able to actually get some of the likeness right it really speaks to the collector and me and almost kind of moves me in the direction of wanting to pick these up up until i see that price point now some of these do kind of sweeten the deal by having these cloth wired capes that you are able to technically pose but i know going in that it's going to be a statue it's not going to be able to be fully articulated so Right now, I don't really have any strong incentive to want to pick any of these up, but it does kind of start making me think if they can do this at the 1 6 scale and charge 250 bucks for something that's resin versus something that's easily PVC for 50 bucks, I would rather go for the 50 buck PVC. Now, in case you don't know what the difference is between PVC and resin, trust me, prior to making this video, I didn't know either, and I'm probably going to put it in the most layman's terms possible that will probably trigger a handy person in the comment section and i'm not a handyman by any stretch of the imagination so if i happen to get this wrong please let me know down below but i believe from my very quick five minute search is that pvc is made out of a material that is pretty similar to that of what they make the mcfarland toys figures the seven inch scale figures out of whereas the resin is made out of a thermally created material that hardens rather quickly it is much more quality it's got much more weight and therefore it's not going to be prone to heat so from what i can kind of deduce here is that pvc statues can still be prone to heat which means that if you leave a pvc statue in the trunk of your car and one of these days you kind of press up on it it's going to bend and it's going to warp and damage the, the it might not break instantaneously but it'll definitely warp and kind of ruin the illusion the imagery that you were going get, trying to get out of that statue as much as possible whereas a resin statue is going to be so hard that you could leave it in the heat and nothing's going to happen to it However, it's probably going to be much more prone to falling and instantly breaking from any kind of distance. Whereas a PVC statue might be able to resist, maybe get a little bit of tippings, but still be able to bounce off. So you, you got your trade-offs, and of course, one of the biggest trade-offs is going to be that price point. And that's not to say that some of these $50 figures look all that bad. This uh, Superman by Jim Lee statue that's just going for a flat $50 bucks actually looks pretty nice. It's that When I think of Superman... That's exactly what I think of. Cold, hard, man of steel Superman. The American dream Superman puffing out his chest, standing on top of an eagle statue that's probably reminiscent of the Chrysler building. And it also comes with a posable cape. And this looks like it's going to be a full retail release. But when it comes to the full 250 bucks statues, like I mentioned before, the Dark Knight Trilogy Batman or the Adam West one that just got recently revealed, as well as this other comic-based one or much more artist based one that's designed by Dan Mora from the DC designer series which has him kind of looking like in a grappling kind of pose it doesn't look like the the cape is actually articulated on this one but it still looks pretty badass it looks like a very quintessential straightforward batman and like i mentioned before these statues aren't necessarily anything new i do know that when the batman was coming out back in 2022 there was one six scale statue that was going for 160 and it's made out of a resin, but it didn't have any of these like qualities that they've managed to perfect. It's just that they're leaning so much into this scale. And if they're going to be charging, you know, 140 to 170 is one thing. 250? Guess what territory we're starting to overlap with? Hot Toys figures. And it kind of makes me wonder, at what point do you think that McFarlane will ever explore the possibility of delivering on 1-6 scale action figures. Actual 1-6 scale figures, 12 inches tall, retain the 22 points of articulation or even build upon that and kind of round it up to 30. And sure, you might not be able to be as detailed as you can be with a resin statue or even a... Actually, you know, I'll take the back. Resin statue but still retain some of the good sculpt work that you can get out of a 7-inch or be even better because now you're dealing with a bigger canvas. Once you make your figure bigger, you almost don't really have that much of an excuse to hold back on a little bit of the paint apps, a little bit on the detail. 
And if you're going to be charging 250 I would rather put 250 towards a figure that's going to come with accessories, functionality, articulation, the works. It's the reason for why I love Hot Toys so much. And even though I'm not expecting full-blown hyper-realism out of McFarlane Toys, if you're already making statues in this scale, and you're giving them cloth capes, what's stopping you from doing the same thing with action figures? Sure, cut back on the resin, go for PVC, but then give us the articulation. Personally, I'd be down for it. At least, if it means that we don't have a specific material that's not even physically... I'm not physically able to hold in my hands shoved down our throats. Fidgetal. 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 He's still doing it. He's still doing it. He's still pushing the whole NFT digital market. And most of you already know exactly how I feel about this topic. And if you don't, I made a video where I compared so far every, well, almost every released version of the DC Rebirth Batman, the one from the DC Rebirth storyline that originally started with like the gray, black and gray and purple figure. And then eventually we got the Frostbite edition. We got the gray edition that came packaged with a uh, Batwoman and I almost said Catwoman, Batwoman and Clayface. And then the recently released DC Multiverse digital edition or Court of Owls edition that comes with the alternate head sculpt that's unmasked. But the big selling point about that figure apparently was that he came with a digital collectible. It's the reason for why the price was spiked up to $25, a price you typically expect from a Build-A-Figure or from a Page Punchers figure that comes with a physical comic book that you can also hold in your hand and read through. But that wasn't necessarily the case with that Fidgetal. And it looks like going here into the latter half of 2024, McFarlane Toys is not doing anything different as far as that campaign is concerned. Not only are we getting more digital releases and more announcements about what's joining the shop that you can add to your collection, Case in point, some of these figures that have been recently released have had kind of like their digital equivalent be tied to it. And I feel like probably the best example here would have to be the Nightfall 2-pack in which you get the Mega Figure Bane along with the brand new Nightfall Battle Damage, I guess you could say, comic accurate Nightfall Batman that comes with a cloth wired cape. He's got, like I said, Battle Damage. You're able to recreate the iconic scene where he's bringing his back and you got Bane in there. But the big thing about this thing is that it's going for 70 bucks, And so where's that extra $10? Because if you guys remember, the MSRP for this boy is the mega figures are typically 40 So that's Bane going for 40 That Batman is your traditional 7-inch. Let's push it a little bit and say he's about $22.99, $23. That should come out to about $63, but they're rounding it to 70 and this is not a McFarlane Toy Store exclusive. You're technically able to pre-order him, albeit he's probably sold out at this point, but you're technically able to pre-order him in any mass retailer, Amazon, GameStop, you name it. Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth. And yet, it's still rounded out to 70 bucks. Why? Because this two-pack is part of the digital campaign. If you visit the McFarlane Toy Store website, you'll notice that you have this square here in the middle saying, Digital version of this item. Nightfall Bane back Black Bird. Bleh, 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 bleh. What the f is this? Nightfall Bane Batman back <laughs> Nightfall Bane Batman back break. Backshot is part of the McFarlane digital collection. Also look for the variants. And I'm certain that there's probably going to be some card in there saying download the app, yada yada, do all of this thing. And it goes a little further. Remember when I was talking about these statues and how so far there's no clear cut incentive to make me want to pick these things up beyond the the likenesses being a little stronger like on the Christian Bale Batman and having the wired cape. Well, McFarlane is like, we got you. You can get this figure for 50% off, half off, if you buy a specific digital collectible on the McFarlane Toys digital store. Uh, so if you're not indoctrinated into the whole digital stuff, then you're SOL as far as any kind of discounts. Or you could take your chance uh, at waiting to see if not enough stock moves 
and come Christmas time, there's going to be some kind of customer appreciation bundle or something that will then discount the statue for people who missed out on it or didn't really feel compelled to want to pick it up. Snapshot will take place on May 14th. One p- I don't even know what that means. Pre-orders go live on May 9th. Stay tuned for all kind of day. And then you have your list of requirements. So basically, you need to own this McFarlane digital collectible, which is that like Batman where he's like kind of extending his cape, designed by Todd McFarlane. Uh, your viewer app account needs to be connected to a wallet, the Polygon wallet, which I kind of broke down in the most frustrating way possible in that video where I was comparing the DC Rebirth figures. I had a specific segment in that video where I made it clear how unintuitive it was to connect these wallets to make sure that it, you know it was minted, waiting for them to mint it uh, up until the next day. It it should be intuitive it should be streamlined it should be convenient once you kind of create all of these different barriers to entry you've already kind of lost me and you can only imagine and that's coming from someone like i mentioned in that video who's tech savvy so what's going to happen to people who don't really want to bother with this kind of thing they're missing out on 50 percent off might as well not even pick up the statue you're kind of losing out on a little bit of your customer base here or Don't make a resin statue in the first place. Keep it PVC or find some kind of compromise. Or, like the idea that I just kind of proposed a little earlier, look into the 1-6 scale action figure market. And maybe you don't have to go hyper-realistic like Hot Toys, but somewhere in the middle like Mondo. Mondo does these figures. They've been doing the Batman animated series figures, which I actually have that Batman Mondo 1-6 scale figure. It's... For the most part, awesome. There's a couple of chinks in the armor as far as articulation. Sometimes it feels a little rough, but it's a figure that you're only paying, what was it, like 160, 170, uh, or, you know, for the basic one, I think like the deluxe one with extra accessories does get closer to about 200, 220, but that's at least 30 to 40, maybe $50 cheaper than a statue. Whereas over there, I can articulate this guy, I can pose him, he's got a bunch of accessories. Please, McFarlane. Definitely consider tapping into that market because once you start kind of trying to push for this digital stuff and now your next incentive is to offer hefty, hefty. I mean, if it was one thing for 20% off, 30%, I'll be like, all right, well, I guess the digital stuff is kind of taken off without me knowing. But the fact that you're going as far as 50% off, I think that should speak volumes to, uh, to you. And if not then, then at least making the process of making this whole synchronization of the wallet and things much better than it initially was because right now this is not it the adam west dc direct resin statue is also going to do the exact same thing only this time instead of the the todd mcfarlane batman you need to hold hold the digital batwing from the flash digital collectible and it needs to be in your viewer app and you need to have everything synchronized and once again you'll get 50 percent off the Batman statue it's almost like they know but this is the ultimate hook they believe for the fidgetal stuff and frankly I don't think it's really going to be it because fidgetal is just not going to have that sway and matters aren't necessarily much more optimistic after his appearance at the Phoenix Fan Fusion 2024 Expo in which he had a panel filled with reveals that once again pushed the digital market and his inclusion in it along with a one-to-one scale of the 89 Batman cowl that doesn't appear to be wearable, more figures that are non-Batman related, but he did announce his partnership with Marvel to do statues because we know that Hasbro's not going to let go of that license for the actual articulated stuff. Nevertheless, no new really hyped up Batman figures in the 7-inch scale once again, but there's still looking to double down not only do you have these discounts we have a brand new wave coming but now you have your wave two of that series that's going to be including the atom from the dc silver age superman from our worlds at war and green arrow from longbow hunter which have been launched for pre-order and they are going to be part of the mcfarlane digital collectible bullshit because in order to have the digital collectible of animal man which is going to be a bath that you're technically not building you need to get these three again harken back to my experience with the dc rebirth batman that i again came with a dc rebirth that wasn't even the one that was in the box it was the prior one with the purple cape the purple and black cape so if you want animal man and he's going to be the bath you're going to have to get all three you only get one you're probably going to get some random superman figure if you get that superman i don't know but right now things are just not looking terribly positive for this whole concept of fidgetal and 
here's the thing. I don't believe that they're necessarily hurting on the physical side of things when it comes to these figures. I just think that a level of balancing needs to happen with that physical stuff and you'll be in good standing. Digital, not to say that there isn't a market for it. I know that there's probably some others that are out there and I constantly hear McFarlane's argument and his example, his allegories about the picture of your loved one on your phone. But you know what that picture also has that these fidgetals and these NFTs don't have? The experience. When it comes to that photo of that family member, nine times out of ten, I took that picture. I was there. I'm simply just taking a memento with it. I didn't digitally create this figure. I'm not working at McFarland Toys. I'm not there. I'm consuming. And as a consumer, I need to vote for with my wallet. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. What are you guys going to do?